What's going on everyone? Happy Thursday to everyone. Hopefully everyone is doing well, staying safe, healthy. If you had to take a COVID test, hopefully you have tested negative. If you did test positive, I hope you have a full and speedy recovery with no long COVID issues. It is time now for the Thursday edition of the Pandemic Update for February 29th, Leap Day 2024. That's right, today is Leap Day. So we get an extra day this month. Happy Leap Day to everyone. If you're new to my channel, this is where we do the daily pandemic update on all things COVID and all the other viruses that could be a health threat to you, such as flu, which will be our first topic today. If you're new to the channel, hit that subscribe button down below. If you like this content, give it a thumbs up. If you want to help keep more people informed about what's going on, by all means, share these videos. And if you have any comments, leave them down below. Our first story today, yet again, Pope Francis is not feeling well. We can assume this probably started last week. Remember last week we talked about Pope Francis wasn't feeling well and he was unable to perform his duties. And then uh, he went back out to do his duties. Well, turns out Pope Francis has been taken to the hospital after suffering from the flu. So this is not good. We know he's been sick several times over the past few years. So this is not good. And we wish him well wishes God bless him, and hopefully he has a full and speedy recovery, and he can get back to his duties. All right, moving on to this now. Adele postpones March dates of Las Vegas residency due to illness. They don't state what the illness is. We can suspect maybe it was COVID. We don't know if it was COVID, but it's going to be a bunch of March dates. So, yeah. This is uh, not good. Uh, yet another person that is dealing with illness. Speaking of illness, we go now to Alabama here in the United States. Gastrointestinal outbreak forces elementary school to close. This was posted on my website by one of my moderators. Steve is his name. And my website, datareport.info. It's a wrath of information. Stuff like this gets posted, so it's archived. That way we can go back and look at it whenever we want to know about something that has happened. And in this case, there is a gastrointestinal outbreak at a school in Alabama. In Fairhope, West Elementary School has been forced to close through March 1st, 2024, due to a gastrointestinal outbreak of 774 students have been absent. Wow. Now, not all of them may be ill, but you get the idea. That's a lot of people being absent. And a similar type outbreak is occurring at Fairhope East, which is also being affected, but it's not the same size outbreak. Could it be norovirus? Could it be something else? Who knows? Don't know, but uh, this is not a good thing to see. And also, this is not good. We come over to this now from uh, CBS News. Research suggests COVID-19 affects Brain, age, and IQ, sure. Of course, if we go back to my website, you can see here, when you take a look at the different uh, sections, there's one for COVID studies and papers. And in that, we have one that is just for COVID's effect on the brain. And guess what? Take a look at this. The COVID can really impact your brain, the virus. Look how many different uh, studies and papers there are. And there's some that I have not gotten around to adding yet, such as the one you just saw. Now, we're not going to go through the whole thing. If you want to read that whole thing, I did tweet it out this morning, and I suggest you take a look at it. It's rather interesting. It's just another way this virus can impact our health in a long-term manner, which is not good. All right, something else that can impact your health, air quality. Air quality can definitely impact your health. However, i got to share you some good news today majority of the country is dealing with lower readings. In other words, green in many places. Minneapolis, there's, yes, there's a little bit of concern for you. Florida, some concern. Slight concern on the West Coast, but we got to admit here. Let me zoom this out. Look at this. This is the best we've seen on a nationwide level in quite some time, and that is including the fact that the wildfires continue to be ongoing in the Texas region. Yes, it's just devastating what is happening there. If you want to learn more about the weather, I have a channel where I do just that. It is called Climate Data Report. There will be a link to that down below. I didn't do a video there yet today. Who knows? I may. And we may also just hold off and do one tomorrow. Undecided yet. All right. I have to show you this. This is not good. We talk about Philadelphia EMS calls each day. Yeah, it's back up to 808. And there's a little bit of a connection possibly going on here. I'll explain as we go along. 
Take a look here at Montgomery County. There are a few calls right now, just 11, but we come over to Chester County, Pennsylvania, and my goodness, I'm not going to sit here and count them all, although I did a few minutes ago before doing this video. Yeah, look at this. Yeah, a few minutes ago, before I started here, there were 19 calls. You can see sick person shows up several times, heart problems, respiratory difficulty. As a matter of fact, respiratory difficulty comes up multiple times. It's very busy right now in Chester County. And I want to skip over to another state at the moment. And that is New Jersey. Look at New Jersey here. I talk, talked about a connection with uh, EMS calls starting to rise in Philadelphia. Well, maybe that's the case in New Jersey as well. Because look at this. COVID. It bottomed out at 550 on the 23rd. But then on the 24th, it went up to 578. Dropped a little on the 25th to 576, then it went to 591 on the 26th, excuse me, 25th was when it was 576, 26, it went up to 591, then 597, and then on the 28th, it's now up to 606. Now, these aren't big increases, but, you know, it's creeping up again. It's not dropping. We would like to see it drop. It's not. It's slowly starting to go up again in New Jersey. So, that is reason for concern and Maybe it's uh, one of these uh, little sub-variants. There's a whole bunch of little sub-variants that are floating around out there. New Jersey has been known to have one. Maybe that's what's causing it. Honestly, I don't know, but it's something to keep an eye on. New Jersey is not dropping right now, which you would like to see them dropping right now. On a ventilator, 30 people on a ventilator in New Jersey. 78 people in the ICU. Discharges, look at this. 91 discharges in the last 24 hours. We will go over to New York State in a little bit. First, I do want to take a look at a couple wastewater sites. And I think today we'll do one from the Northeast, the Southeast, the Mid-South, and the West Coast. How about that? So let's go up to the Northeast. How about we come and see what's happening in Boston, Massachusetts? Really big wastewater site. Let's see. Curiosity's got the better of me. It's 2.4 million population. COVID, still high, but... It's starting to drop once again. That's good to see. After it did have a brief rise back earlier in February, RSV, high but dropping. Influenza A, high but steady. Influenza B, high but look at this. Ever since February 14th, up again, it has gone. That's not good to see. And HMPV is high but dropping. And wow, norovirus is rapidly rising at this point. We know there is a big increase in norovirus in the northeastern states, and I think it's impacting other regions of the country as well, such as that story we showed you from Alabama. But look at this. It's rapidly rising in the Boston area. No mpox at this time. And hepatitis A. Wow. A lot of detection of that at this time. Let's go down to the southeast. Let's see. I wonder, is norovirus a problem here? Let's take a look at Tallahassee. Hopefully we can view Tallahassee. Yes, the data is full. Now, they had a prolonged drop, or I should say a multi-week drop in COVID. Most recent update, it's going up a little bit again. It's still at high levels. RSV is low. At this time, influenza A is still high, but it's dropped. Influenza B dropping. Most recent update has risen a little bit. And look at this. Yeah, I think it's safe to say this norovirus outbreak is just not only in the northeast. Other areas are rising as well. Look at the southeast. Yeah, it's rapidly rising. Well, it's literally going straight up now with norovirus in the Tallahassee area. And you have to remember, now, with so many people who have had COVID having weakened immune systems, they are more susceptible to picking up viruses. The more people that pick up a virus, the more it spreads to other people. So now they're spreading it to other people. Yeah, norovirus is really uh, going to town at this time across much of the eastern states. Let's see. Let's go to some other uh, wastewater sites. Um, Mpox, no issues in Tallahassee. How about in the Mid-South? If we click on a Mid-South wastewater site... Are they seeing a rise in norovirus at this time? I do want to know. How about we come over to Dallas? Let's take a look and see what's going on in Dallas, Texas. Now remember, this is one of the sites that has the chart down low, but maybe not. If something's rising, I think that gets corrected. Take a look at COVID. COVID is medium at this time and holding steady, slightly dropping. RSV is slightly dropping. Influenza A is slightly dropping. Influenza B is high and slightly rising. HMPV, not much of an issue at this time. And look at this. Norovirus is not rising in this portion of Dallas. Taking a look at Mpox, there was a detection back on December 15th. All right, now let's go out to the West Coast. Let's see. 
Let's see what's going on with the levels out here. How about we go up to the north and see what's going on in Sacramento, California. We can see here, COVID, it's low at this time. RSV is low at this time. Influenza A and B are high, but they, they're really, you can see here on this chart, I don't know why it says high. It has actually dropped at this time. Norovirus, not much of an issue. It is in the medium category, but we're not seeing that rapid rise at this time. And taking a look now at MPOX, and you can see here, there have been some detections of MPOX in this area, with the most recent one being on February 17th. All right, moving on now. Walgreens this week, 17.3% positivity for COVID. Prior week was 24.2%. Difference of down 7%, and testing is way down. Any of these white states are not updating, so that's a big problem as well, which is why testing is way down. This data at this point is not very accurate this week. Last week, there was much more testing, 15,476 tests. All right, let's take a look at some CDC data now. And we will see, we will get an update on the variant proportions tomorrow. JN.1 is in the lead at 96.4%. All right, let's take a look at some more states. And we are adding a few states today that we had, may not have mentioned in a very long time. First off, New York State, 1,557 new cases added. When you come to New York State hospitalization, it's 1,069 in the ICU. 146 so that number it continues to be a downward staircase it continues to drop now let's come over to this aha when's the last time you heard us mention connecticut it's been quite some time where we talked about the state of connecticut at least in terms of numbers we did them for wastewater the other day but we have not gone to their dashboard i don't think ever so let's take a look here it says current week influenza this is the number of cases i believe 753 and then when we take a look at what is going on with uh, COVID, 412 RSV, 54 cases. And mind you, this is incomplete data at this time. Let's just click on COVID and see what happens. Okay, and when we click on COVID, we do see COVID-19 hospitalizations. Let me zoom this out a little bit so you can see it slightly better. You can see here, ending on March 2nd, which March 2nd is coming up pretty soon. That'll be the end of this week. Uh, they have 108 people in the hospital at this time for COVID. And that number is dropping, again, like a staircase. But it's not going down as fast as New York State, but it is going down. And on the most recent update, it did go down a little bit faster. So that is good to see at this time. All right, moving on now. Let's see if L.A. updated yet. We should be getting an update from L.A. this week. Nope, no update yet from L.A. And now let's take a look at what is going on in Colorado, 2-27. That's this week's update. Currently hospitalized, 118. And you can see cases this week dropped by 122. 1,585 cases this week in Colorado. All right, moving on now. Look at this. Another state we have not talked about in a while, Kentucky. And in Kentucky, we can see emergency department visits for all the viruses combined that they're tracking, which is COVID, influenza, and RSV. It shows here that there were 3,607 emergency department visits as of February 24th. And then when we take a look at emissions for all the viruses, it's 491 combined at this time. You can also click on individual viruses here. Let's see what happens when we click on that. We can see here COVID. While COVID uh, is tracking lower than last year, it is still of concern and it shows you here uh, for the month of February, it looks like there have been 738 COVID hospital admissions in the state of Kentucky. Now taking a look at Chicago. Remember last week there was a little bit of an increase in Chicago? Well, that week has come and passed. And now this week there is a drop. Look at this. Hospitalizations are down ever so slightly with uh, COVID in Chicago. It says 15 is the daily average. Bed use is down. Emergency department visits down. 126 is the daily average for cases. And deaths are down slightly. Taking a look at vaccinations, it looks like the number of people vaccinated is up ever so slightly. It is given a red up. I don't understand what that means. It just says 1,575. Usually red would indicate that it's down, right? I don't remember what the number was last week, but hey, 1,575 people either got vaccinated or took a booster shot in the city of Chicago. 
All right, let's see. Did we get an update from the state of Washington yet? Let's see. Washington usually updates once a week, and it does look like, actually, I think I did see it say yes. Okay, so it looks like they did update for this week, and it shows here kind of a mixed bag of information. First off, COVID emergency department visits are down 11%. Influenza is up 8%. COVID admissions are down 23%. Influenza and RSV, flat. And when we take a look here in the change in number of people for beds occupied, ICU beds, that is, it's 25 for COVID. That's down by 7. It's 17 for influenza. That is up by 6. So, yes, more people in the ICU for influenza this week in the state of washington massachusetts we don't have your update yet i will try and get that into tomorrow's pandemic update Alrighty, folks that does it for today's pandemic update we'll have another pandemic update again tomorrow if you enjoyed this update give it a thumbs up want to see more content subscribe to my channel down below if you want to share this with more people, because the more people we share these videos with, the more people become informed with what's going on, and we also help keep more people safe. There's also ways down below to support the channel if you want to do that. And I will see you all again tomorrow. Remember, tomorrow will be COVID variant update day. I don't know if we'll do that video tomorrow or the next day, but we will try and do a COVID variant update video, unless half the HHS regions do not update. We will have that video tomorrow. I'll see you all again next time. Until I see you again next time, stay safe, everyone, and thanks for watching. Have a fantastic Thursday evening.